separate a leader from communication. I think a leader and their communication are definitely married. I'm glad that you've joined us on today's podcast episode and that you're part of a community of leaders who are intentional about their growth. I'm extremely excited on today's podcast episode to be joined by a phenomenal guest, a dear friend of mine, a dear brother of mine, a world changer at heart. We are joined today, maybe just to brag a bit on him, by an amazing author who's written amazing books, which are really changing the leadership in organizations and individuals' lives. I'm joined by a human development consultant, a risk and quality assurance specialist. And not only that, he's also a ministry, uh, he's a reverend for those in ministry. We'll talk maybe a bit about that when we delve into who he is, an amazing father and husband to an amazing uh, Lady L. We'll talk also possibly about that because I know you can't separate the both of them. And over the years, I've really come to know him at a personal level and gain so much from his wisdom. He's also a lecturer in the biggest university in our country, UNISA, as well as at Bible school and different institutions. And he is so tremendous. Podcast family, I encourage you to get your pen, get your notebook. You are in for an amazing ride. I'm joined in studio today by none other than Musa Lalamani. Thank you so much, sir, for being part of our podcast on this beautiful day. Thank you so, so much, my friend. I really appreciate it. I feel deeply, deeply honored, you know, to be coming here and to be having this important conversation. I really, I'm really excited. Excited, excited. I think what makes me so excited today is the fact that, as he said, it's really a conversation between two friends and you are fortunate to eavesdrop on this conversation. But, and I'm going to be asking some of the questions that I know you want to ask. <laughs> but you're not too sure how to ask them. But maybe to team up there, maybe just to introduce yourself as to who you are and some of the transitions that you've made in your leadership that have blended you where you currently are. Well, yo, yeah, a very, a very interesting question you're asking. So who, I, who am I? I am, I, I've, always, I've always seen myself as a leader from a very early age. Um, because I believe, I really believe, and this is a philosophy that I've really you know, espoused and embraced for a very long time, that leadership has to start from home. You know, it has to be self-leadership before you could lead. You know, because many a times people make the mistake of wanting to rise up to the position and coming from a place of deficit from mm. themselves. Maybe I'm really putting a cut before the horse here. <laughs> my, my name is Musa Dalaman, as you said, uh, growing up in the Shanti village, you know, of um, Bimpopo, uh, growing up, uh, did my uh, high, high school, primary, as well as part of my varsity. Um, I'm a commercial student, uh, come from that sort of background, doing my auditing, my accounting, my business, and what have you. So, yeah, in the course of that, I ended up into the space of uh, risk management and uh, auditing. I worked for government, I worked for the private sector, and currently now I'm working for myself. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. <laughs> but I think in the main, you're asking the question, in terms of um, you know leadership, where did it really originate from? Yeah. I would say that, uh, as I said, I always had an inclination yeah. of wanting to really, you know, always impart something to people and, and, and really to see people coming out to become the best they, 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 they could be. And how best could I do that? Fun enough, go, growing up, I grew up as a very much introverted person. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you that because especially finance and auditing, mm. uh, I think oftentimes there's this myth, I'll say myth or stereotype that people who are in finance 
are not interpersonal in nature. They always just live on the computers <laughs> and dealing with them and focusing, and focusing on the figures. But when it comes to human connection, they lag a bit. Yeah. I'm glad you're asking that question because you know, somewhere along the line, I think to be more precise, around about 2013, 20, 2014, there was a turnaround of my life. I always knew that, you know, I'm really a man for people yeah. because people will always come come close by, you know, even though when I'm like, you know, sort of focused on the figures and numbers, yeah. people will always come. But there was a specific episode of my life which actually reminded me of you know, um, the, the how to remind, I remind myself of that because one of my mentors was saying he found himself in a space where he was doing the right thing at the wrong time. Mm. What we meant was that he was a doctor. He was a doctor. So this guy went to school, studied everything. But he noticed that he would spend most of the time helping people to be able to achieve their purpose, their objectives, and so on and so forth. During the time of practice as a doctor, as a doctor. And there was a turn up. So similar, same thing happens to me that I will be auditing, busy with writing my reports and so on and so forth. People will be coming up and knock at my brain and say, Listen, Musa, we want your time. You know, I'm going through these challenges, relational and whatnot. And that's when I realized that, you know what? Yeah, auditing is good, but I think there are people that are waiting for me that I need to really help them out from leadership perspective as well as, you know, communication and so on and so forth. So the rest is history. Here I am. I'm doing exactly that. I'm following my passion with all of my heart. And um, I, could not, I could not be in a better space. Wow. <laughs> but maybe, um, I think you said something so profound, which I really want to double click on, mm. within how you transition from your ordinary nine to five job, but feeling a higher quality. Mm. And I think there's something I really want to highlight today, which is the role that courage had to play within that. Mm. The role that courage plays in the life of a leader. Mm. Having to leave comfort and something that is like fixed, something that I've studied for, but feeling some nudge for something higher, something more that I can contribute to. How did that play out in your life, the role that courage played in your life? And maybe speaking to, to the leadership community as to the role that courage plays in leadership. Uh, my friend, let me be very frank with you. And I think it was you who, who said this the other time when we were talking. Do it, do it um, afraid. Yes. Do it scared. <laughs> yeah. I think if we're going to really try to talk about that you won't be scared, we'll be misleading people. Wow. But you must do it even, even when you're shivering. I think let me put that way. Wow. Um, so much so that because what you see is much more bigger than what you're feeling. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? Wow. You know, because the thing about it is that wow. the moment you really come to the realization that, you know what, um, God has endowed so much in my heart and in my life that, you know what, I am literally shaking because of what I'm seeing or not because of what I'm feeling right now. So, so what does that mean? Wow. It means that um, cowardice does not have a place wow. in the place of the leader. Wow. It doesn't have a place. And I'm not saying that we don't feel scared. We do. Wow. We do. And I'm actually reminded of a story that is told. Probably maybe to some people it might sound like a cliche. But I'm told Mandela, at a time when he was a president, there was a big hoo in KZN where people were like killing each other and so on. Climbed into a chopper, got in there. But it is told, the story when it was retold was that, you know, the guy was next to him as they were flying because they were dead, kind of a turbulent time as, as they were about to land. And then it was like so composed. And this guy was sitting next to him, was still thinking, is this guy for real or what? <laughs> you know, is he a fake or what? Mm. And it wasn't a fake. What happened was they, they learned the story later on that Mandela said, oh boy, wasn't that terrible? You know, that turbulent. But when you look at him, you couldn't tell that that guy was terrified. So what am I saying? It's, it's a matter of how do you really summon the courage, you know, to be able to manage the space of, you know, those turbulent and very sometimes treacherous mm -hmm. type of a terrain that are very intimidating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be able to say to yourself, I'm going to do it scared mm -hmm. and I'm going to make sure that by the time I leave this earth, I must have re leave a footprint. Wow. That's the most important part. Because remember, my friend, there's no, there's no double me. There's no, there's no double you. Yeah. There's no double zoning. Yeah. You come in limited edition. Wow. So if it can be done by you, wow. 
Guess what? It's a serious indictment to humanity. But the family, uh, I don't know about you, but that's pure gold right there. I encourage you to just pause and take the two minutes backwards, rewind, and listen to that snippet. I think what I love the most about what she said now is how what she was seeing is more important than how you feel. Mm. And how you come as a limited edition. And by you being scared, you're actually robbing the humankind family from what you had mm. that was invested in you that they were supposed to get from you. Mm. That's mm. amazing. That's amazing, that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> uh, and as I said, it's really, I'm having a great time with my friend and maybe to, to, to something. Uh, as I promised the podcast family uh, in terms of communication, maybe to dive into that now. Um, what's your philosophy when it comes to communication? Um, well, let me, let me start it from here. I'm saying, as a leader, or as human beings, here we're having a we're having a private private chat. chat Let's call it that. Yeah. <laughs> For the benefit of our audience. So there's nothing. This seems to be a bit natural and easy. The big problem comes when you now are given an elevated stage mm. where you're thinking people are listening to me and it sounds a bit intimidating. Mm. So I'm really bringing this from this particular angle to say, remember when you are when you are a leader. Yes. When you are a leader. You ought to come to the place where, first of all, be conversant with you. Because once you are conversant, then you're going to be conversational. Wow. So that's my philosophy. So the the issue is this. For you to be able to speak better, you must have a content. And that content, of course, you have to read this, you have to study this, observe that one. But guess what? The biggest content career, it is yourself Mm. through the experience that you've gone through. Mm. So never waste the experience. Mm. None of the things that you're going through, that you're experiencing, you know, should be discarded and be disposed of as, you know, it's really nothing. Mm. It's something that must be able to develop a content in you so that then you can become conversational because now you are conversant with yourself. That's my philosophy, simple. So the issue then is about, which is the second leg of your question. So so why, why is it so important that we must be, you know, people who must, you know, be okay around conversing and communication as leaders? Because the thing about life is that nobody will be able to read your mind, mm. unfortunately. Mm. You know, therefore they are waiting for you to express yes. yourself. And anyway, if you are not necessarily expressing yourself, because life constantly always impresses us with something, so we have to express. So if you are not going to express yourself, you're going to be depressed. Wow. So this is how basically it works. So you are constantly going to, now if we are talking, somebody's like, wow, where did this guy come from? You are getting so impressed. So impression alone is not enough. You should be able to express. So, uh, so, so communication or conversational ability or acumen helps you to be able to express who you are the best way you know how. And that's a matter of fact. When you express yourself, you only have your voice, voice prints. Nobody else. <laughs> Nobody can express the way I do. Wow. So if you don't do it again, it's a serious indictment. Oh. I don't know, but I actually have never thought of communication this <laughs> way. <laughs> How oh, it's the impression that pushes you to express, and maybe just to backtrack a bit, you spoke something about content and how a communication comes from the content that you have as a leader. Mm. You mentioned the experience that people can pull from. Mm. Maybe talk now to someone who's like, I want to be a better communication. You said something initially, we spoke of how before you get the platform to speak at, it actually starts with you conversing with yourself and being able to have a conversation alone before people, because I think that's where pressure comes in. Mm. Where does one start? I want to be a better communicator. I want to grow in content. I want to be able to have conversations where, when, when I'm with people, like, I'm able to contribute. Like, basic, basic, where can I start? So, so to, the, the departure point for this, yeah. departure point number one, is that, uh, as I said, develop, develop confidence in you. Okay. Develop in confidence. So, because the problem is this, and let, let, let's not really raise the voice around this one. I'm going to really just whisper. <laughs> problem, problem with us as human beings, we always would have mentors, people that we look up to, and so on and so forth, which is great. But the idea of life, is that as much as those people who look up to, 
We are never designed to photocopy them. We are meant to be you. Because everything about you, it's, it's, it's designed inside the, your fingerprints, your, 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 your voice tones and everything. They're supposed to be able to help you to shape up you. So that is the, the very basic. So you should be able to develop that confidence. So if you ask me, I said earlier on that I was very much introverted. Yes. Part of it, you will realize that I'm thinking I'm a little bit shy. You know, I'm not so sure whether people are really ready to hear what I have to say. So summon the courage to be able to say, you know what? I came original. I'm, I must be authentic. If I die copy, then it means I have done de I have done disservice to God. So that is the conversation you should have with yourself. Part of the, the second step should be once you do you do that practice. Okay. Practice. Okay. And there are lots of those places. I remember back then, I told you I grew up in Limpo, in the village. <laughs> that and that. So what I would do, because I did not have a platform where I would be able to speak in front of people and the, you know, camera and so on. Guess what I would do? You know, I would go and find, you know, bush. I mean, it's Limpo, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's like Eden. Yeah. So you go there, you practice on your own. You know? You are talking. Sometimes, you know, we've got modern, our modern time allows us. Stand in front of the mirror. Start to talk. Develop something. By so doing, when you get used to the growth of really speaking, mm. because it's, it's, mm. it's really all about getting to the, to the place where this thing becomes your second nature. Okay. Because you're having a conversation. Like I said, so I'm emphasizing and highlighting the aspect of the conversation. Because if you start to be thinking about public speaking, you know, okay, I'm so scared and I'm like, you know, I'm going to lose myself here. Yes, those are, by the way, the aspect that we deal with. Because some of the people, when they are like terrified, they will be sweating their palms, you know, they will be like, dry throat, you know, and so on and so forth. And so much so that by that time when you are dry up and all that, guess what is happening in your head space? There's so big race that is happening, you know. Yeah. Ideas are like going 300 kilometers <laughs> per hour, and it's not helping the situation yeah. because there you are, you're so terrified, you know. So that's our. That, those are the two basic things. Number one, develop confidence, okay. and in you as a person, do not be competing. Okay. We are not in competition. Okay. You know, as much as I look up to, you know, the likes of people that are really speaking so fluent, and I'm thinking, wow, what has just happened here? He is himself or she is himself. I'm in a different league, I'm a different race, different lane. So stick to that particular one and know who you are. Know who you are. Know who you are and do you. Okay. Parker's family, know who you are and do you. My friend, I think one of the things I love about you, because you're saying so many profound things which are just causing my head to spin, <laughs> as you say. Uh, one of the things I love is how you seemingly I would say effortlessly, seemingly effortlessly <laughs> connect with a lot of people from different walks of life. I've seen you on radio, uh, and we'll talk more about the things that you do. I've seen you in a lecturing class. I've seen you in the community of faith as a pastor, uh, speaking to, uh, leader, um, to, to, to church, like literally preaching uh, leadership spaces and work. You are like this uh, management specialist, uh, and all the different things that you do when you have to communicate. How do you adapt? your communication in different environments? Well, I think, <clears throat> let's start it from here. Because I wear different hats, okay. um, for example, if I'm walking into a client and a client says to me, uh, Musa, we want you to come and risk assess us. Okay. I know that the language I'm speaking there, it must be risk. Okay. So in other words, everything about me that day, <laughs> if you come across <laughs> I'm just risk, I'm controlling, I'm mitigating, so, 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 so what does that mean? It means I really need to be able to be a person who must we read broadly. I cannot just only be finding myself reading about, I don't know what is it called, life orientation only, <laughs> psychology only, logotherapy alone. So I must be able to really read very broadly. By reading broadly, it gives me a language that I can be able to adapt in different worlds. Just for, I'm sorry, I don't lose your train of thought. That's amazing. I just want to highlight that and double click on that. By reading, you enable yourself to learn the language that will help you to communicate. Mm. That's amazing. Mm. Because the, the, the truth is, of the matter is this. Wow. Leaders are readers. Wow. Leaders are readers. readers. Yeah. Because if you think about it, wow. there are so many people who, who could have think about Professor Warren Bennis, for example. I've never met him. But guess what? 
I've met him in the book. In the book. Um, you talk about uh, Medoc. You know, you talk about who else? Uh, John Maxwell. Have I met him? I've not met him, but I've we met on the books. Yeah. So I'm saying you should be able to as a leader position, especially now. Okay, maybe let me rephrase. Especially in this VUCA world. Yes. We call it VUCA world. I'm sure the audience know <laughs> what VUCA is. So, because the world has been so vuca now that you need to be able to, you know, when, whenever you come across a book, whenever you come across information that you feel this is pertinent yeah. on where I'm going, consume, okay. absorb. Okay. Because uh, for, for me to be a, an author, I'm jumping the gun here, <laughs> for me to be an author, it did not just happen overnight. It happened because I've been reading, and soon, because you've been continuously reading, then later on, then you're gonna be able to pick up your own, your own, your own, you know, book. You're gonna be able to really put your thoughts together, crystallize, and people will be saying, "Wow, we love this." Wow, you know. So yes, yeah. Um, just, these are bars and bars and bars. Maybe backtracking a bit. You mentioned about it because I was asking in terms of contextual analysis and you spoke something so profound about understanding the hats that you are wearing mm. in different contexts mm. so that you're able to show up within that hat that you are wearing. Mm. And then you spoke now to how um, the Fuka world and how you need to consume content until you find your own content. Mm. And we'll transition to that space shortly where you will speak about the amazing things that you do. I know you've got programs which help uh, individuals to improve their communication. You've got the self-discovery, mastering your part, the art of public speaking, and we'll talk more about that within your consultancy space. But maybe uh, the do's and don'ts of leadership, just a quick uh, do's and don'ts now as a leadership uh, specialist. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention is the logotherapy that you did. <laughs> I, I think that's, that's what happens when you've got your friend who literally has done amazing things. And that to me reminded me that he's definitely going to be a returning guest on our podcast when we begin to because he has a lot of things to contribute. But for today, I really asked him just to maybe within the background of leadership and communication, the do's and don'ts of, of, of communication. Well, number one, um, communication, what, what you should do the, the most or more, you should really start be a person that must continuously sharpening your edge of communication. Okay. So in other words, understand what is really current. Okay. Because, I mean, it's going to be pointless for me, my friend. Let's, let's be frank about it. It's going to be pointless. Although I might be consuming of, or have consumed the stuff of 1980, yeah. we're not in 1980 now. We are in 2021. So what are people speaking about? Uh, I was corrected. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give this simple example. I was corrected my son. My son is about 12 years old. I was a 12 year old. He said to me, Dad, we don't call it nets anymore. Maybe it was your time when you went to school. We used to call it nets. But now we call it math. So what does that mean? It means for me to be able to, con to connect with my audience, I should be able to speak human language. Human language. I'm underlining the word human language because many a times we could come with this big academic jargons that people would be like, say, wow, what has just happened here? Impressing them, you may be in the mental space, but not impacting them. Wow. So come to the level where you speak the language people understand you because that's where change happens. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking both the do and the don'ts. So sharpen your edge continuously. As, as, as Stephen Covey would say, sharpen your edge continuously. What not to do? Um, don't, don't, don't come to the place where you will settle and you're thinking, I have it all, I've arrived. The arrived syndrome is very, very a, a, a problem, problematic for me. Because then it means that if you come to the place where I know it all, I know everything that is to be known, it means then that you're gonna quickly stagnate, and once you stagnate, you become obsolete very quickly. Mm. And guess what? How would you know that you're obsolete? People are not gonna be, you know, wanting your service, for an example, people are not gonna be interested in what you say. But more importantly, as much as you really remain on the cutting edge and relevant, be a person that you know expresses your thoughts straight to the point. Go straight to the point. Don't beat around the bush. Yeah. Especially, you know, to, to us as speakers, the big challenge sometimes you come with this heavy, you are heavy, you've got this great content. Yeah. But unfortunately, you are not going straight to the point. <laughs> and people don't have time at the moment. Yeah. You know, you really have to be able to package your 
your whatever, whether it's a sermon, whether it's a you know a conversation in a public or marketplace, do it such that people will be able to really follow you, which is very, very important. The other follow-up on that one is that learn to do what I call what conversation that you do or communication or speeches that you offer. They must have a framework. You know, you should be able to know where you're starting, where you're heading, and you know where, where you're going to be ending. Because you can't just be, you know, nibbling here and there, because then you lose your audience. Very, very important. And the last one, this is just a, a, a bonus. Oh, yeah, the, the bonus one is that um, we must come to, to understand that when we are talking about fear yeah. of speaking, for an example, which we call it glossophobia, yeah. it, is, it is exactly something that, that exists, but that can be treated. For an example, a person might say, but listen, what happens if I stand in front of, pe of more people and I just lose my thoughts? <laughs> then what happens? You know, it's a reality. It's a reality. So there's a treatment of that. And what is the treatment of that? Then you should be able to, when you start your communication, use something like a cue cards okay. that should be able to really help you to say, now I've really lost my thoughts by just maybe peeping through, okay, now this is where I am. That's a treatment, simple. You know, so I'm just giving some some kind of a you know, <laughs> bit of a bonus okay, yeah. so that you can really understand that once we really get into the the, the, the mastering of art of public speaking, my talks I call it, yeah. you know, it's a beautiful course yeah. that when people attend this type of a course, because it's so experiential, some of them they don't even they don't even want it to end. Because we really are engaging, you know, with touch aspects such as you know how to build your rapport with your people. You know, or your audience, yeah, yeah. how to navigate that particular space and understand really the what we call the nuts and the balls of where where does communication actually really originate from, and we unpack that particular space and it's just a wow, wow. <laughs> I'm so thrilled by this conversation. I really am so extremely thrilled by how uh, you're just sharing all these nuggets, which are so amazing. Uh, I'm gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> a 30 second communication hack. Uh, and you mentioned it, I know you, you really double click and I know you speak more on it on the on, on, on the course that you offer, which we'll talk to you now now. Just 30 seconds, someone they hijacked to speak, maybe at an event or and they were not prepared and they just had to now wing it, quote unquote, but a maybe a communication hack, uh, which is just like a checklist of some sort that can able enable the person to better communicate what needs to be communicated. A few things that are very, very important if you're gonna be communicating. Number one, learn to breathe. <laughs> I know it sounds like, oh, that's too obvious. You know what? When you stand up and you're talking to people, guess what happens? You've got floods. You've got floods of ideas that are flying in your mind. And if you're not breathing, you are likely to stumble, you know, stumble over, all over yourself, you know, not making sense. So that's very, very important. So when you start to breathe, you are basically saying to yourself, let me think, let me process, let me get this right. And by the and by the way, communication does not have to be too voluminous to be understood. Sometimes you could just say one sentence and people really get you what you are talking about. So very, very important. Mm -hmm. So yeah, breathe, <laughs> breathe, breathe, breathe. But more importantly, I'm gonna go back to this one particular point that remember every conversation. Okay. Speak to somebody. You know, one on one. Yes, there might be thousand because I've, I've I've come to the place where sometimes I'm addressing thousand. I'm talking to a lot of people. But at one point, my friend, I'm I'm on on, on radio, and uh, the presenter said, or the producer said to me, "Do you know how many people you're talking to today?" I said, "I don't know." She said, "You are speaking to one comma three million people. <laughs> one comma three million people. Oh. So all I was having was just fun because I thought I am just having a conversation." <laughs> Wow, wow, that was so amazing. So you're speaking to all these millions and to you, you're just having a conversation. 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 I think one of the things I wanted you to observe, for those who are watching, for those who are listening to the podcast, I encourage you to go to the link, which is on the episode notes, where you'll be able to access the video on YouTube. And one of the things I want you to observe uh, in this conversation that I'm having with my dear friend Musa is how in his communication he's using his hands a lot which is the importance of body language. I was actually observing him from the start, and I intentionally didn't use my body language, because I wanted you to see the difference in communication as to how, ex not exaggerated, but how the emphasis was within his communication with the body language that he used, versus one who was just talking without body language. And, and I think that's also part of the things you talk about in your course, 
in terms of the importance of body language. And uh, maybe talk to us <laughs> what happens in this course uh, so that uh, people who are really intentional about their leadership, because honestly speaking, you cannot separate communication from leadership. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. So, so let me talk let me talk to this way. Um, whenever we're communicating or conversing, yes, yes. Um, people see us more than hearing us. Mm. Okay, what does that mean? Mm. It means um, I could be seated here and somebody's like observing, look at how we're seated. He crossed his feet and uh, it means this and that and that. And, and you know, very interesting, and this is something that I just learned recently, that our eyes, our eyes, they are able to really pick up on a body language so closely that if it picks up or an eye picks up that whatever conversation that is going on here does not interest me, that's where it communicates to the brain mm. to say disengage, mm. disengage. Mm. So meaning that we should be very intentional even through our body language. Wow. So what happens is the following. If I'm conversing and I'm not mindful of my, my body language and so on, it's likely that I might be leading or sending a, a conflicting message, you know, to my mm -hmm. audience because I'm saying one thing, mm -hmm. but I'm communicating one thing with my body language. So it's very, very important that as a leader who wants to develop this communication acumen, you should be very cognizant and very much in touch mm -hmm. with your body language mm -hmm. because I am reminded actually of a story of a good, good friend of mine who was, who was invited to talk as a guest somewhere. So in that particular village where he was invited to speak, it was an offense for, 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 for him to use a right, a right, a, a right, a, or rather a left, a left hand whenever he's gesturing, whenever he was gesturing. And the worst of all, the worst of that was that he was actually addressing the king. Mm. You know, as he was conversing, he had a mic on one hand on the right hand side, he kept on doing this. Mm. But the advice of the king, he kept on saying this. But he did not know what was what was going on. Mm. When he finished, he had delivered a powerful presentation. Oh. Everybody was pleased, but the king was offended sure. because he had been using the left hand. hand, you know. But then he was in, fortunately he was invited again. So when he got there, he had this mic, you know, with the left hand. He was just standing with the right, and everything was okay. But because he was already habitually tuned mm. to be using, you know, the right hand right. and yes. just standing with the left. The advisor of the king, they have spoken before, before he went to the state, to say, if you see me doing this, I'm just saying that, put that mic back to the left. <laughs> so what am I saying? Wow. Body language is very, very important. Okay. It's a deal breaker. Mm. You go to a place or business where they might invite you once, maybe because you did not communicate well, and you know, you, you're confessing something that was completely different, mm. you might not go get another chance again. Okay. So very, very important. Yo, podcast family, uh, I don't know about you, but I just took so much from this episode. I encourage you, I think one of the things I really want to encourage you is to ensure that you head over to www.wuzanidamakakuna.com to download the episode notes, we'll link them in the bio, because I strongly believe that from the content that was shared in today's episode, there's a lot of application and a lot of the practical nature uh, of how you really gave us examples of how, uh, which I think is really introductory. And if you want to take your communication to the next level, there's quite a lot of things and product offerings that you have. I mentioned earlier on that you are an author. Mm -hmm. Maybe to our podcast audience, how and where can they get hold of you? Oh, and um, <laughs> you need to go deeper in terms of the offerings that you have. Well, I also brought just some samples of what I have. Well, so what I have is my book, you know, Journey of Meaningful Self-Discovery. Nice, nice book, very small. But I'm telling you, content-wise, you'll be shocked. Well, it is accompanied by this workbook that goes with it. You know, whenever you are really attending this particular uh, 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 workshop, which, which is called Journey of Meaningful Self-Discovery, experiential as well, we go and we dissect the space of how to begin to be able to know who you are mm. so that you can be able to express you. Mm. You know, you, you'll, be, you'll be tremendously impacted. Mm. So it's not only that, we also then can be able to really offer a, 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 which accompany that self-discovery. We also have a webbook called uh, Self-Discovery as well, which is then talked about by a book called Choose, Choose to Change. Wow. 
this is like a cherry on top because it's pointless for you to you know resolve to do certain things and only to find that you can't follow up you don't know what to be done so that is one aspect the other aspect is that as you rightfully said we also have you know uh, matops this is like a experiential course i call it a premium because once you attend this particular course by the time you walk home you are a different person you confess differently you know you build those you know confidence but where do you get me well i've got my website up and running yeah okay. <laughs> it is www.mudindaconsultancygroup.com simple mudinda is m u d i n d a consultancygroup.com you go there you want to really see the range of the offerings what we offer we offer life coaching yeah. we offer therapy we offer training what else do we offer a risk, risk and assurance it's quite an amazing opportunity to you present when you launch it's a, it's an amazing website and we'll definitely link it in the bio so that you have a direct link to be able to connect uh get Musa's email address there on facebook uh linkedin and instagram i believe i am there all the social media platforms he is there mm, i'm there facebook i'm there as Musa Ramani oh you can look for in the consultants group you can go to Instagram, Musara Rahman is there. You can also go to uh, Twitter, I have a Twitter handle, wow. um, at Masterpiece Musa, you can find me there. You go to, what else, LinkedIn, I'm also there, at Musa. So I am on social media, you, you find me there. And I tell you, the day you're going to bump into this type of services, you are bound to be changed, I promise you. No, definitely, I really, especially the first, I love that small calorie dense, but strong, the self-discovery course. It's really, I think to me, part of the offerings, I think that's a great starting point, just for personally, anyone who wants to grow in knowing themselves. I think that's a great uh, place to start. So we'll definitely link it into the show notes so that you're able to connect and be able to start this journey of becoming a better leader. Because at the end of the day, that's what we do. We seek to empower you to take charge of your personal growth, development, as well as your emotional well-being. And what a way to do it by such product offerings. So my good friend, I am thrilled. Uh, I really took so much from this episode. It's really one for the books. I think I enjoyed the time I got to spend with you. Uh, if we could, I'm sure we'd go on and on and on, but I already made a mental note that, okay, it needs to end because of time, but I already know what I'm going to do as a follow-up with you, and I can't wait to have you back again on the podcast. Thank you so much, my friend. Like I said when we started, that it is such a joy and an honor, you know, to be sitting here and having this conversation. And ours, you know, it's a conversation that continues. So I'm really glad that we could really be able to really just touch really just a little bit not much just a little bit today for, for, for the benefit of our audience to understand exactly what we do so my parting shots really more than anything else it would be to say in this book world you know you cannot afford to be a person who is not you know leading yourself you cannot afford not to be upskilling yourself find something that you can you know, that you're good at it may not necessarily be communication but i want to promise you this one thing at a very smaller scale, at one point or the other, you're going to find yourself having to speak publicly. Are you ready? If you're not ready, this is the opportunity where you can enroll and we really take you through to prepare. Sometimes you're going to be invited into that wedding. You know, you are a, repre a family representative or family representative or friends representative, whatever the case may be. Or in your project at school or at work, or maybe you're a manager. You know, at some point you should be able to speak to your employee. You know, and they are waiting to hear from the, you know, the manager. How are you going to talk to them? Oh, you probably want to really upskill yourself in an area of really discovering yourself. Because one of the things that I just want to maybe finish by is that I have noted this important notion that life is like a question, my friend. Mm. Life is like constantly asking mm. us a question mm. on a daily basis. Mm. So therefore, if it is asking us a question, the presumption is that we have an answer. We have an answer, and that answer may be a solution. It could be a birthing of a business, birthing of you know that ministry, or you know whatever the case may be. But be a person who has really discovered yourself. That's where you're gonna really live better. And I wanna finish by this quote. There's one man that I I I admire the most. His name is Advocate Paul. Somewhere along the line, when he was about to finish his journey. He said, I am poured out. Mm. I'm poured out. Mm. So meaning, we are here on earth 
for us to be able to impact Earth and live it better. Are you living your life? That's my question. Oh. Klaus, Mike. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much once again, uh, my dear friend. I think this has really been such an amazing and a joy and a great blessing not only to me, but to our podcast audience. And thank you so much to you, family, for being part of the episode. I encourage you again to head over to the website, uh, linked into the bio to download the episode notes. And thank you so much for being part of the episode till the end, until we meet again. But before, before that, I want to encourage you to listen to this with your teams and spread the word, because I strongly believe that if we can get more leaders to grow their communication, the leadership trajectory will change. So until we meet again next time, let's continue to change the world one individual at a time and ensure that as a leader you take your lead.